Okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for joining. This is uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and this is part of uh, a series of webinars that we've been doing for uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Software, IT experts community. Uh, today's topic will be Universal Discovery Zone. Uh, Universal Discovery Zone based discovery. And um, we have some great speakers, great partner. Um, so it looks like we've got plenty of folks in the room ready to get started. Um, for those of you that are into social media, uh, take advantage of Twitter, LinkedIn, etc. We have a hashtag. And um, so today's hashtag will be HPE Discover CMS. So we'll go ahead and use that as. Uh, some dialogue to let folks know what we're talking about, and then uh, we will pick um, pick one of them and uh, put together an Amazon gift card. So that's to help get social media going, let folks know, get excited about what we're excited about. All right, next slide. This is brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Um, this is part of our HP software or uh, enterprise software uh, IT experts community. Uh, we have a series of these webinars and we'll be providing that. I'm your host, Mark Bradley, product manager here at HP Software, and I'm excited to be here and excited to uh, uh, kick this off. Um, next slide would has some housekeeping. Um, we want to encourage questions. So off on the right-hand side, we have the webinar control panel. And within the webinar control panel, um, obviously you're muted, um, but we are encouraging questions. We have folks on that uh, will be monitoring and addressing your questions as quickly as possible. And then as the participation continues and the dialogue continues, we'll incorporate your questions as we go or we'll capture them at the end. But we highly encourage questions in that interactive uh, uh, dialogue. And to help get things started, here's today's speakers. Uh, we'll have uh, George and Sandeep, um, we'll have them introduce as they uh, kick off the uh, results positive part. Um, but what we wanted to do was kind of kick off with a couple of poll questions to kind of help us understand our audience so that we can better align with, uh, with what we're trying to accomplish. So I'm going to start the first one, try to keep it really easy, kind of a quick yes, no question. Um, do you currently have um, do you have current deployment of Universal Discovery? Kind of a, again, a yes, no. Um, hope get started. Oh, great participation. Um, unfortunately, it's not Chicago style where you can vote twice, so I can get some consistent answers here. So it looks like we're at about 62% voted. I just need a few more folks reach up there, just click the button. All right. So we have, let me go ahead and close that one. So we have 66% say yes, 34% say no. So that's a, that's a good indicator that um, some folks are thinking about it, looking towards uh, uh, the next question here. So let's go ahead and launch this one. Have you used zone-based discovery features in version 10.x? Again, quick yes, no, gives us an idea of what folks are familiar with. Great, great participation, really appreciate it. You know, as I attend webinars, uh, I like when they ask questions first because there's multiple ways. We only have an hour. Your time is critical but valuable. So uh, being able to understand where you're at is helpful for us. Great. So we got 72% voting, so I'll go ahead and Get ready to close that. Oh, nice, got a couple more in there, 74. All right, so we got 44% that said yes, 56% that said no. So that kind of gives us an indication again, folks coming to learn uh, what this is all about. And the third and final, we'll go ahead and launch this. Are you using modeling in UCMDB to map infrastructure to business services? This is a pretty critical question. We're seeing a lot of interest in this area. A lot of customers that uh, trying to understand the business services 
the pieces and parts and components, whether it's for financial or purely for discover. All right, a few more votes here, up to about 60%. So if you're thinking yes or no, if you're hovering, go ahead and click on it. Almost there. Okay, I'm going to stop it right at 70%. 71, there we go, a couple people clicked on it. Okay, <clears throat> so we have 54% say yes, 46% say no. So with that, George, Cindy, I will pass it to you. Welcome. Thanks, Mark, appreciate the introduction and the, and the polling questions are always appreciated. Uh, my name is George Flansberg, and I'm responsible for the operation practices at Result Positive. So uh, delivery focused on the teams that actually implement these tools and, and uh, set them up for, for customers. So I'm excited to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to, um, to talk to you guys on the front end of this and tell you a little bit about who Result Positive is. So, thank you. So we've actually broken out our um, Results Positive into four areas the primary focus, so we have an arm that's responsible for managed services, specifically around uh, providing services in and around the HP tool stack and, and helping you manage those environments, uh, business technology solutions, which focuses both on the, um, the ICOM side, operations, as well as the ADM side. We have consulting services that run the gambit across both implementation, best practice seminars, idle certifications. And then we have a, a, an R&D arm specifically around application development. So for those, those folks that need custom applications developed to meet their needs, um, we can build those as well. So we have all four of those areas covered. Sandeep, next slide, please. Here is a focus on our business technology solutions. Uh, we have on ITOM, we have cloud and automation which has a team of folks focused on, on, um, on both the cloud solutions, um, private and public, as well as automation. Business service management, BSM, which is the focus of our, our, uh, our session today. Application development and management, IT service management, which also includes SACM for the asset management side, and then overall uh, project application portfolio management, which also includes uh, the, uh, the transformation efforts as well as the, the um, new managed services around those as those particular focus areas. Next slide, Sandeep. So we have several different areas of consulting service offerings, both from a strategy perspective with things like assessments and strategic planning workshops around process, so re-engineering and, and, and taking your business services and applying them to your your, your ITOM um, tools. Technology integrations, so we have a huge focus area in and around bringing solution configuration as well as upgrades and enhancements. And then organizational change, so we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the transformation being part of our focus. Uh, we're a big, belie big believer in managing um, the technologies you have and maximizing the return on your investment. And we have several different ways that we can show you how to do that. Uh, through uh, maximizing your, your uh, HP tool purchases. So anyways, guys, I'm going to turn this right over to Sandeep to get started. I uh, appreciate your time today and enjoy the, uh, the rest of the seminar. Thank you, George. Uh, uh, excited for the opportunity to showcase um, uh, UCMDB version 10 today. Um, so the topic for today's webinar is, of course, zone-based discovery. So I'll be, com I will co be covering different uh, use cases. Um, both from the presentation perspective and from the demo, live demo perspective. So let's get started. Uh, this uh, diagram really shows the typical enterprise level deployment of universal discovery where in today's, uh, uh, you know, IT environment, we have uh, both the mix of both the traditional data centers um, and then the new uh, stack-based data centers, which would be pure private clouds. Uh, and then you have these uh, <coughs> remote offices, small uh, data centers or remote offices where you have your uh, ID infrastructure and then you have your client uh, devices where like desktops, laptops uh, that are in and around on the network. So as shown in this particular picture, we have a central configuration management system uh, and then the, we have all these probes uh, typically deployed around uh, the enterprise uh, that discovers the assets uh, and the configurations uh, running uh, on the infrastructure on the IT infrastructure and report back to the central configuration management system. Um, 
as it's shown in the picture, you could have a probe running outside your firewall, which reports back to directly to your CMS server or goes, goes through certain kind of uh, proxies uh, back to the configuration management system. But the overall idea is to gather that data at a single, in a single database um, and then use that database for mapping and reporting capabilities. So uh, what kind of information you t would be typically collecting from universal discovery? Uh, the basic one is, uh, you know, with UD, 10, you have inventory discovery, where you could actually discover all your assets, uh, how many holes do I have, or client PCs or desktops. Um, you could be using both agentless and agent-based uh, discovery activities based on uh, what your use cases are. And then once you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, populated your database with, the, with the inf enough information, you could actually be creating reports and feeding the information then to the asset management or to IT service management. Uh, for uh, things like change management and some of the other critical IT processes. On the other side, the use case is also for application dependency mapping. So now I know this is my infrastructure. Now how does my critical business applications or revenue generating at business, business services rely on that infrastructure? How do we actually, they, what are the dependencies between them? Where are, the, where are the areas that I need to be more focused on uh, based on the criticality of my business functions? Um, so that comes more on a data center focus uh, rather than the client environment focus. And then um, there could be different approaches you could actually take in order to accomplish those goals. Um, you could be looking at a very service-oriented discovery approach where you are just discovering assets related to a certain uh, service. Or you could actually be using a hybrid approach where you have discovered your end-to-end -end infrastructure in our, on your multiple data centers and then building more layers on the top of that infrastructure that includes the software layer the application layer, and then tying them finally to your services. Um, uh, some of the typical use cases for that is you want to enable the application modeling, impact analysis, um, change tracks, um, uh, uh, tracking the changes in your environment, uh, and then using your environment to, uh, are you using configuration manager uh, that comes along with the configuration management system for compliance purposes. Um, what zone-based discovery enables you to do is uh, you limit the scope of the discovery activity to a certain subset of your environment network. So what we uh, really mean by that is that we take the entire ocean of your ID infrastructure and segment it across in different logical units. Now those logical uh, uh, units could be depending upon uh, physical data centers. Uh, those could be depending upon certain business services. Um, so the logical division could be really uh, what makes uh, uh, you know the best fit for the discoveries, discoveries to be managed. What does that further allows us to do is that we can run the multiple instances of the same discoveries activities in different zones at the same time. So traditionally what we have been doing without and in UCMDB version 9 or even in UCMDB 10 with just using the discovery module is we turn on the discovery job and it goes out there and doesn't matter how many probes I have, it will run against all the IP ranges. And the spiral discovery will kick off Another, or will trigger another discovery job and that will trigger another and, keep, and that spiral discovery will keep on happening. Um, of course, that's a very good, uh, you know, the, the foundation in the UCMDB that keeps the data up to date, but it also sometimes comes with uh, certain challenges where uh, you might not want to, for example, run a deep dive discovery on certain IP address, where on certain IP address you do want to run those discovery, uh, discovery jobs. Um, so what this multiple instances of same discovery activity allows you to do is better control what IP ranges would be triggered for certain discovery jobs. And we'll take, we'll show that in, as an example once we get into the demo. Um, and last but not the least, to configuring the each discovery activity instance with specific parameters. So I could have an, a, a segment of my network where I want to discover IPv6 as when I'm discovering the IP addresses. And then there are there could be another segment of network where I do not want to, I just want to discover IPv4. I don't want IPv6 to be populated in my uh, database. And that's a pretty simple use case, but um, there could be other use cases based on how, you, how your environment has been set up. So with that, with this feature, you could actually configure if the zone-wise that what parameters under those discoveries or would be used in a specific against specific IP ranges. The overall method with the zone-based discovery is to keep it simple, to keep 
the entire discovery process simple without putting a lot of effort in discovery and you can take that effort more towards the mapping side which uh, which will be which would allow you to map your discovered data uh, to tie them to the business functions rather than uh, spending a lot of time on the discovery side of the uh, equation um, so the the overall message is to keep it simple and how we do it is that we have management zones and then we have discovery activities what management zone as I explained earlier is just a segment of your network you're picking up out of all your IP ranges and dividing those IP ranges into different segments and then defining management zones on top of that so in this example management zone X is having IP has to have have an IP ranges loaded with this data center a data center B and some of the data center C and then I have a management zone Y that has all the IP ranges for data center E and data center D and then some of the IP ranges of data center C as well and what data and what a discovery activity in a zone uh, is could be defined as a group of uh, discovery jobs that you run against those IP ranges that you have defined in that particular management zone so a discovery activity could be just to discover the IP address by just running a spring, simple ICMP discovery job or could be as deep dive as uh, discovering your middleware applications running on um, your host so what, it, what discovery with diff different discovery activities being applied to different zones allows you to do is to have a better control over what you want to discover in zone X versus zone Y not only that but also how often you want to discover that so in this case for example management management zone X have an inventory discovery that has been run by weekly and then infrastructure discovery has been run daily so what means that I'm scanning my client PCs or laptops bi-weekly and then but I'm doing my infrastructure data center infrastructure daily on the other hand management zone Y uh, I have the database discovery jobs running app servers running daily and then the infrastructure running weekly because I'm more focused around the application layer not the basic infrastructure layer the application layer in those particular zones could be a bit more dynamic so depending upon what you were expecting out of uh, you, you know your different zones uh, you could actually arrange the schedule for those discovery job uh, activities in those zones uh, separately whereas in the traditional uh, discovery job mechanism you just turn on and there's one schedule that pretty much applies to um, all different all the IP ranges that you have loaded on your probes all right let's move to our use case number one which is simple uh, creating zones and universal discovery um, before we get into the, uh, to the actual demo, uh, there are a couple of things that we want to make sure that we are prepared with before we actually move on to we turn on any or we start creating our zone, zones in the uh, universal discovery. The first one is, of course, finalizing the approach for the logical distribution of your target. Um, again, as I mentioned, it could be physical uh, location based or uh, it could be data center based um, uh, or service or completely service oriented. Or it could be a hybrid of both the service oriented approach and the uh, and the physical location and the name of the zone is important because that name of the zone would actually become the one of the attributes of your CIs that would be discovered in that particular zone so created by for example as an attribute of a CI would have the name of that discovery zone in that and uh, once you have created the discovery zone uh, you would not be able to change the name off from the UI for the discovery zone Third important thing is the IP ranges. It's pretty critical um, that we have the IP ranges defined on the probes, um, and because the zones will actually be picking up those IP ranges from the probes you are selecting for that particular zone. So you will not be defining your IP ranges again from scratch when you are defining your pro, uh, your zones. Those zones will actually be picking up IP ranges based on the probe selections you have made for that particular zone. And then finally, if your probes needs to be up and running, uh, their status should be connected and uh, would be patched uh, according to the um, patching level of your UCMDB server. All right, with that, I'll move into the demo environment straight away. So in this demo environment, I'm using UCMDB version 10.21. And uh, within UCMDB version 10.21, I'm in the data flow management zone. And within the data flow management module, I'm in the universal discovery and 
you have two tabs there. One is the discovery module, which is traditional discovery job, uh, and then you have the uh, zone-based discovery. Um, so I'll quickly go over through one of these zones that I have um, enabled already here, and then we'll um, quickly uh, create one other zone here. Um, so let's review it. So within the root folder, I have a subfolder, which I've named data center infrastructure. So uh, I intend to uh, discover all my data center infrastructure within this particular folder. And I created a zone here, which is um, data center for Houston. So I have a data center in Houston that I'm discovering. So if I go into the details here on the right-hand side, it shows me the IP ranges that I'm running that are covered w within that particular uh, zone um, that I've created. And then it overall, it shows me the overall results of based on whatever discovery jobs I have run so, so far or discovery activities, uh, what are the overall results? What are the success? What are the failures? Um, if there are any warnings. And this section of the um, of the discovery status is pretty pretty much similar to what you would have been doing in your uh, general discovery modules. Um, it's pretty much the same. Um, you still can uh, go inside and you can pick up your discovery jobs and drill down. So the drill down and the actions uh, that you would be able to do is uh, have not changed in the zone-based discovery. And then um, similarly, the results is pretty, looks pretty much the same. You could actually look at what is the overall results of this particular zone, how many, for example, instances of SQL servers that have I discovered or WebLogic application server have I discovered. So you would be able to review that uh, within your um, uh, management zone. Further, a management zone is categorized based on the discovery activities that you're running. So I have two discovery activities right now. The first one is discovery IP ranges, which is I'm just using it to discover my IP ranges. Uh, and then uh, the other one is uh, Windows host discovery. I'm using this discovery activity to discover my Windows host. So within this discovery activity, as I mentioned earlier, it's a group of discovery jobs, basically. So I have host applications by WMI. That's one discovery job. I have host connection by WMI and host resources by WMI. So whatever IP address are, are the results, or IP addresses are the results at the part of this discovery job, um, which, are, which we, we can see over here, right here, that we have discovered 14 IP addresses, that automatically triggers my Windows host discovery job because that's in the same zone. So within the same zone, the trigger would pretty much work as it would work for your traditional discovery jobs. Um, so to, uh, those 14 IP addresses probably just, uh, triggered uh, all of these different discovery jobs against those IP addresses, and we see the results there. With that, with the overview, let's go ahead and create a new data center uh, or a new ma management zone for another data center. <clears throat> so basically what I did is right-click on, on my folder where I want to create a data center zone or my new zone. Uh, I can do that or I can just click on this new button here. And then I'll name it. Uh, I'll just name it Data Center Phoenix. And with the ranges method, you have two options. You have to, you, you can use full data flow probe ranges. So based on what probe I'm selecting over here, by default, all the IP addresses, uh, all the ranges on that probe becomes a part of that particular zone. Or I can do a partial um, uh, I can define the partial ranges. So, for example, I can pick only a um, subset of the IP ranges that I have on my probe. So, you have both the options available. Either you go with the entire probe, or you can just pick a subset of the IP ranges on that particular probe. In this scenario, we just, we'll, we'll just pick up the uh, probe, which is uh, my probe uh, sitting out in the uh, Phoenix Data Center. Uh, once you do that, you can click on OK. And I also wanted to kind of uh, walk you through the settings here. Uh, the settings page uh, really shows me that uh, what, what are the different setting, discovery settings for that particular zone. So in this case, you have general setting. And this is pretty much the same that you might have seen for other discovery settings um, um, you know, in your current uh, discovery um, management. You actually you can change the values of, for example, SQL query timeout, how many seconds it takes. And that will only be a plastic cable to this particular zone. So it won't be a global change. Um, same thing for the application signatures. Um, you could, have, for example, right now we have the out-of-the-box application signatures for um, uh, discovering and mapping or uh, understanding what is the BSM, uh, uh, BSM application, HP BSM application. So you could actually be prepared. You could actually uh, create your own signatures uh, in the application signatures uh, window, and then you could also be adding or more ports, your custom ports 
to label them as for the application. So as an example, if I scroll down here to the SQL, I've added some custom ports that I'm using for my SQL server so that once they are discovered, they are marked up as a SQL protocol in the relationship. So you can do pretty much, uh, edit pretty much for a particular zone from the settings page. So once you are done with that, um, you click on OK. Uh, as, you, as soon as you click on OK, it will ask you whether you want to run the basic infrastructure discovery activity uh, for your, this particular zone. Um, for, uh, this is really a handful uh, when uh, you, you are pretty much new to the universal discovery and the zone-based discovery, uh, and you pretty much uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, have a good idea of what you want to do, but uh, you don't have the uh, in-depth knowledge of how the discovery jobs would be triggered. So for those users, it's pretty handy. You could actually just click on yes. But for the users that, are, that pretty much understand how is the overall spiral discovery going to work, what are the dis different discovery jobs and discovery patterns that are available in UD, um, you could actually be creating your own discovery templates that we will discuss in our use case to, um, that we'll pick up later. So for now, I'll just click on yes. And um, it allows you to name your dis uh, discovery activity. So I'm just going to name it inventory for now and click on Next. Over here, it allows you to do what different protocols you want to select. So if I'm, uh, my infrastructure over here uh, is primarily consistent of uh, Windows, I can be using WMI, so I have a credential in there. So if I want to change or add new credentials, I can do that on the fly. And then over here, it gives you uh, uh, different options to select. So it asks you if you want to ping the IP ranges in this particular management zone, which is pre-selected for you. And then you also have the option to select the IPv6 IP address or to discover them uh, as a part of your discovery. So I'm unchecking that. And then you also have the uh, option to resolve any DNS names to the IP addresses and to discover Windows, Microsoft Windows domains. I'll just keep them uh, uh, checked. And then there are other uh, activities that uh, you can turn on as a part of your. And these are our parameters for different discovery jobs that are group grouped together under the infrastructure discovery um, activity. Once you have made those changes, you can click on Next. Um, you also have the option to destroy the agents if the IP ranges in that particular zone consist of uh, your client uh, environment or any server environment that you might not have direct access to or remote access to from the probes. Uh, you could do that. Or you could be very um, selective on what accounts you want to use to install that UD uh, agent for your Unix machines and and things like that. Over here, we're not doing any agent based in this particular demo, so I'm not going to select any of anything of that nature. And then finally, you actually select your schedule for your discovery activity. So you want to repeat it every day, always. That's the default. Uh, but you could actually change that to hours or weeks, and you can actually change that uh, the time that discovery runs that particular day to what day time you want to run it in daytime, work time, or any time on the weekend. This, you could also create your own custom time te templates. So you can pretty much create your own calendar for that particular zone. So there's a lot of flexibility on this when it comes to scheduling uh, discovery activity in a particular zone. Finally, you get into the summary, which it shows you the summary page. What are the different uh, options that you have selected in the template? Um, and then, um, uh, uh, you know, what is the overall schedule of your discovery job? You can activate the discovery activity uh, right here by right clicking on the uh, activity activi uh, activate activity checkbox. Um, or you could just um, finish it, like I will do here. And we'll see the results once it saves um, in the database. So in the created in management zone data center of Phoenix for me, and then uh, the inventory discovery activity was created as a part of the, um, uh, the wizard that we used. Um, so I can just click on the activate button here, or I can just right click and uh, activate it. And also, if you go to the activity jobs, it shows you all the activities, or actually the discovery jobs that are part of that particular discovery activity. So you see that there is a lot of discovery activity, uh, discovery jobs that are part of that infrastructure template. Some of them, based on your selections, are turned on, like green. Some of them are not, because you probably uh, as we selected, we don't want to install the agents or update agents. And some of them are having some um, sort of warning message uh, uh, against them. So it generally means that you do not have 
a credential defined for that particular protocol. So for example, in this case, the power to, I haven't defined any uh, PowerShell protocol um, in my credentials, uh, but this discovery job was activated or was part of this particular uh, discovery activity. So you'll see that um, warning coming in here. With that, uh, once we turn it on, um, it would automatically um, discover your IP address and your infrastructure. Uh, but for our use case, we'll actually, um, uh, for the second use case, we'll, we will be creating our own template. So I'll just go ahead and delete it for now and uh, go back to our presentation slide. Great, Cindy. Um, we had a couple of questions. I don't know if, if I could toss those in since it's kind of relevant to what you just showed. Okay, sure, go ahead. Sure, sure, so we have um, one question. How does UCMDB deal with DHCP ranges, not static ranges? So uh, there, the, the, from a UCMDB or universal discovery perspective, uh, the, uh, how, the, the, it really doesn't matter what method app or free IP addressing scheme you are using, whether it's a static IP or the DHCP IP. But I see your concern is uh, changing of the IP addresses uh, specifically when it's a DHCP. Um, so that really depends upon your scheduling, and that's where the scheduling becomes critical. So for a DHCP or dynamic IP address thing, I probably would have more uh, tighter schedule uh, than the static IP addresses, which are going to be the same over the period of time and are not as dynamic as um, uh, you know uh, the DHCP. So from a from a from a technical universal discovery standpoint, um, it, it it would be uh, it really doesn't it doesn't really matter that you have the IP address assigned to your host from a DHCP or static. If it's there on the network, it will update the database with whatever IP address that it found on that particular day when it ran the discovery job. Um, so, mm -hmm. and that's that's why I said that the scheduling of discovery job uh, really uh, is important in the in this scenario where we were talking about static versus DHCP. Okay, and and you can export these configurations after you've created them. Is that possible? Yes, that does. Uh, so these as a package, so you can export them uh, as a package. If you are, I'm not really sure what is the use case, but if the use case is to export them and probably import them into another instance of UCMDB, yes, you can definitely do that. Uh, and then with that, does that create a uh, uh, trigger limit? Uh, trigger by trigger limit, if you mean that uh, the zone. If you have already defined your limit, uh, or you have limited your zones to certain IP addresses, and those IP addresses are being uh, assigned appropriately to your zones, then yeah, I mean those uh, okay. the limitation on the triggers will be carried over to your the configuration. Great, we're getting a lot more questions, but I'll go ahead and pass it back to you to to show the next use case. Please keep the questions coming in. This is great feedback, great dialogue. Tells us uh, you're in tune with what we're trying to cover. So, Cindy, back to you to continue and know that you'll have more questions uh, when you finish the next case. Well, absolutely. Uh, actually, that's uh, pretty good. Uh, we want to keep this as interactive as we can. Yes. All right. Okay, so um, with that, I'll move into our use case number two, which is we'll talk about how to create a discovery template and deploy discovery activities within those templates. Um, and then we'll also touch base on um, you know, uh, something very important and we want to cover today is the ranking of those management zones. So uh, typically, uh, preparation activities before you actually create your discovery templates and deploy them, um, you identify. It's important to identify the discovery patterns based on the targets. Now that there, there's some knowledge information um, that you, uh, some level of understanding you need to know what are the discovery, different discovery jobs and discovery patterns associated with UD, um, which is not a uh, uh, you know a pretty hard job to do. So anybody who's actually uh, uh, play around with UD. Uh, could, could grasp that information pretty uh, easily. Uh, so once you have identified what are the dis different discovery patterns and what they do for you, uh, you would have a pretty good idea on how you want to group them together into these templates. Um, and that's pretty much what the templates are about, uh, grouping these discovery jobs or patterns together uh, under the same umbrella. Uh, and then you have deploy templates and zones, so we'll talk about that. You uh, And then you parameterize your discovery jobs within those activities. Um, as an example of that was when I uh, when I um, deployed the infrastructure uh, template, we selected IP. We did not select IPv6, so that's a kind of a parameterization. And depending upon what discovery jobs you are deploying, your parameters would change accordingly. Uh, and then schedule of the jobs. Um, well, that's pretty important. We'll talk about that. Uh, and then the activation and the validation of the results once you have the uh, the discovery activities uh, 
uh, up and running. With that, I'll go back to the demo environment. <clears throat> so um, in the previous use case, we created the zone, but we didn't really create it. Um, any, we created activity for uh, infrastructure uh, discovery, but we didn't activate it. And the reason was that we wanted to use the templates, the custom templates to do that. So the first part of this use case, I'm going to just deploy the existing templates. Uh, and then we're going to uh, do an exercise of uh, creating a template from scratch. So over here, the first thing I want to do in Data Center Phoenix is pretty much what I did in the Data Center Houston. I want to discover the IP addresses that are part of the probe range on that. So discover, I'll name that discover IP. And when I click on my discovery job, and it actually provides me pretty much the same parameters that you might have uh, seen on your uh, discovery job. So you see that virtual mode discover is false, um, and then IPv6 ping enabled is true. Um, for this use case, we'll change that to false. Um, so that's the uh, parameterization. Um, click on next, you get directly to the um, uh, scheduling. I'll keep that default. Next, I'll activate right from here and finish. So this is the this is pretty much what it takes to um, uh, deploy a discovery activity uh, in your particular zone. So right away, I have um, a discovery job, which is ranges IP by SMP, being activated on the on an IP address. Um, that on the IP addresses that are part of that particular zone. Further, I would uh, while it's running that, I'll deploy another template, which is Windows Host Discovery, and I'm just going to name it Windows Host. And over here, uh, I'm doing a little bit more deep dive. So I'm not just not pinging IP addresses. I'm doing actually connecting to uh, by host connection by WMI. I'm actually connecting to uh, Windows machines using the um, WMI remote sessions, uh, and then I'm using applications uh, and resources by WMI to discover uh, a lot of different stuff. So, for example, um, discover CPUs is true. Uh, discover disks is also true. Uh, I'm going to change. Uh, uh, let's change discovery discover services that are running on that particular machine to from uh, false to true. So these parameters would come by default with certain values. Um, and depending upon your use cases, um, you could actually turn them uh, on or off. Um, uh, but uh, overall, the idea is to provide you a, um, a better control over what's been discovered and uh, to um, uh, you know provide you the data that you are actually going to use in production. With that, I'll just do next, and I'll keep the default schedule, and I'll activate the discovery activity like I did before. Now I have pretty much uh, to, uh, both the discovery jobs, and now I already have the one discovery job finished, which is the IP uh, ICMP uh, discovery job. And then, as I see, it automatically triggered uh, whatever IP addresses were discovered in that particular zone to run the host connections by WMI discovery job. That's the, um, the additional deep dive discovery job in this particular zone. Um, this is a refresh button over here that will uh, update the results for you. Uh, but you could also be looking at the results over here that if there are any results that have been discovered so far um, on uh, far right. So <clears throat> I see that um, um, over here that there are a lot of different CI types that have been being discovered. I see the list on the right-hand side. And this list will keep on populating as we move forward. And then I'm done uh, with uh, my discovery for that particular zone. For the demo purposes, I kept it pretty limited. We didn't want to run this discovery, zone, uh, discovery for uh, an hour or so. So um, I quickly go down into uh, one of the uh, results. And basically, you do the right, you do the right click and show results to validate that you are getting the results back. Um, and then that's one way of doing it, if you've got the result, any results back. And the other one is, of course, looking at the results part as well. Uh, within this uh, uh, results, you could also be then using the uh, debug feature um, to look at the communication logs. So by default, the communication logs are only enabled for the um, uh, error or warning, warning statuses. Uh, or you could actually just be going directly to your script, or one of the scripts that are Python scripts that are you using to uh, this, run this particular uh, discovery activity our discovery job. So all that feature are still available in the discovery zone, so you're not losing any of the typical discovery uh, features that you had 
um, in the traditional uh, discovery um, um, uh, uh, job feature. So that was uh, pretty much running the discovery um, activities within a particular zone after we created the zone. Uh, now let's talk about um, uh, uh, the uh, creating a template. So I have a use case here where uh, in my Houston data center, uh, if I go to the results, I have a SQL Server, five SQL Server instances that I've discovered. So, and I've already done an analysis that these five SQL servers are running out of the same uh, host, database host, uh, and I want to further discover uh, that what the topology for those SQL server is. So, for example, uh, what are the database tables or what are the database names that the SQL server instances are hosting and how the connections are being made to those uh, SQL server. Uh, uh, basically, a dependency relationship or mapping kind of uh, uh, deep dive. So, for that, I have one option that I could actually um, turn on um, another, I can uh, deploy another dis discovery activity within the Houston da uh, zone, data center zone, and run it against the IP addresses that are part of that particular zone, right? But what would happen if I do that? Uh, if, uh, the um, Because the discovery job will be triggered for that particular discovery zone, all the IP addresses in that particular zone would be running that particular dis SQL Server discovery. But based on my analysis, uh, I've already figured out that there is only a handful range of IP addresses out of that entire data center that that particular SQL Server discovery job needs to run. So for that, what I can do, one of the options is I can do is um, I can go back to my root folder, and we talked about the hybrid approach earlier. I'm just going to create another, uh, instead of a management zone, I'll create another folder. I'll call it uh, service discovery. And then within the service discovery, I'll create a new management zone, and I'll just name it SQL Server Discovery. So all my SQL, uh, Microsoft SQL Server will be discovered as part of that. So instead of doing the whole probe thing over here, I will just use the partial range, and I'll pick up my database host in here. And if I want to change any settings over here, which I did earlier, which I showed that I entered my custom SQL ports. I'll do that, and once I'm done, I'll just define my new management zone. Over here, I'll click no, because I want to use my custom template. So now I have a separate zone, which will just be running against the IP ranges uh, that have been already identified by UCMDB that are running a SQL Server instance. That way, I'm limited by having, having having a better control over where I want to run the SQL Server Discovery job. So, so far, we haven't created any template for SQL Server Discovery. So, I'll just go ahead and uh, go back to the root folder and click on View or Edit Discovery at Templates. And that opens up this template list. I can create a new template. I'll name it uh, MS SQL Template. Click on Next and I can add my discovery job. So with that, <clears throat> I can um, drill down into my discovery uh, module, so database. In database, I go to Microsoft SQL, and I can actually just pick everything underneath that and click OK. And then once I'm select picked up my all my discovery jobs, they're going to provide me the deep dive topology for my SQL servers instances. I'm done click on Finish, and then click on OK. It will save the template in the database, and it will be listed here. So now my template is ready to use. So next I click on Close. Um, one of the things I wanted to highlight over here is that now this zone hasn't discovered any IP address yet. And if I go to my SQL Server discovery job, for example, as a SQL Server connection by SQL, the input trigger for that particular CI is node. So it's important to understand that even if I turn on a SQL Server discovery in this particular zone, it wouldn't be triggered, it wouldn't be getting any triggered IP addresses because I haven't discovered any node in that particular zone yet. So before I deploy my activities to discover the deep, deep dive database configuration, I need to discover the basic the, the actually node, the actual node or the host 
where my SQL Server is running. In order to do that, I'll just do the same thing like we did for our Phoenix data center. I'll discover the IP of my host. Next, next, and I'll activate that quickly. And then I'm going to do the same thing for, because it's a Windows host, so I'll just name it database database host. And I'll keep the default parameters in here. Click Next. And then once that is done, <coughs> um, I can also deploy my SQL template. Again, I can change uh, 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 different parameters. So pretty much by default, it's, uh, it's going to discover basic configs. Uh, but if you want to turn on things like discover SQL files, SQL jobs, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, that would be the parameters will be different based on the discovery job that you are setting up. So once you do that, I can click on Next and then Finish. And then I'll activate my SQL Server. So triggered or two IP addresses. Oh, actually, one IP address is a two discovery jobs. So database TCP ports and SQL Server connection are the one that are being triggered. So <clears throat> once in, pro uh, in progress, um, just wanted to highlight that the simplicity of actually creating zones and creating templates and then deploying them and then having a better control over what you're actually um, creating against your IP ranges. So I discovered my application basically in this particular zone, and I created another zone for that application so that I'm just discovering that app the app deep dive application uh, only against certain ranges of IP addresses in the entire data center. Now, that also brings us to another important fact is that now if you look at the IP ranges for this particular zone, it has the same IP range because I picked the IP range for my SQL Server zone out of this particular probe. So the, there is an overlap between the IP address ranges. Now, the question comes in, do the discovery activity would run? Like, for example, I have discover IP ranges that will also run against that particular IP address in that particular zone and also in this particular zone because those IP addresses are the same and discovery activities are also the same. So there is an overlap of IP addresses and discovery activities. So in order to handle that um, so that we're not running the discovery activities twice, uh, there's a concept in which we call the uh, management zone ranks. Uh, one of the use case for that is to um, handle situations like this, uh, where I can go into the ranking. By default, everything is uh, ranked first. Um, so if I want to rank, keep my uh, data center, basic data center infrastructure discovery higher on a higher ranking than the, the service ranking, I can actually just change the ranking for my SQL Server zone. Um, and it actually shows on the right-hand side the overlap IP addresses as well. So it shows that there is an overlap between the uh, rank one data center uh, Houston zone and the um, uh, SQL Server discovery, which is fine. So by doing the ranking, what I'm telling the zone to do is only run the common discovery activities in the rank in the higher rank. So the discover IP and the host discovery would only be ran in, if it's running in discovery uh, or uh, it would only be ran in the data center host uh, or Houston zone. It, so it won't be running in the uh, SQL Server discovery, over, even though there is an overlap of the IP addresses uh, and the discovery activities in both the zones. And the results will be uh, shared and you could still be able to trigger your SQL Server discovery jobs later once you have discovered your node in that particular zone. All right, uh, with that, um, I'll go back to the uh, our presentation. 
Great. While you go back to the presentation, um, should I go ahead and run a couple of questions, or should we, uh, sure. in the interest of time, let you proceed and then catch the questions at the end? Your call. Yeah, let's do the question at the end because I just have one more slide to go. Okay. And we can uh, cover the questions after that. So overall, we wanted to. Uh, I wanted to conclude uh, the you know the the uh, the presentation of the zone-based discovery with some of the best practices um, uh, discussions. So, so the first and foremost important that as and George uh, uh, could add on to that is the do not boil the ocean. And what we mean that is that uh, for especially for an enterprise level uh, deployment of universal discoveries, we may have 10,000, 20,000, or uh, you know even more assets that we want to discover, um, uh, server and network assets that we want to discover using universal discovery. The best recommended approach is to be in a phased approach and uh, use zone-based discovery jobs to, to start with in a phased approach. So what I mean that that is that when you cover your first management zone for the basic infrastructure, you can at the end of that or in the middle of that, you turn on you know, another parallel sprint for your another data center or your another zone, uh, and have that you know and roll this out in a phased approach. Um, so instead of turning it on for everything at the same time, um, then the second part is the IP ranges management. That's very important because as you would see, uh, the zones are really highly dependent upon how you have defined your IP ranges. Um, in this uh, different uh, when you define uh, in your on your probes uh, because that's where they're picking up their IP ranges from. Um, so it's important to uh, you know um, IP uh, manage those IP address um, uh, you know in the on the probes. And then for enterprise deployment, probe clustering is highly recommended where you can actually share those IP address ranges uh, from a load perspective between uh, several probes um, and uh, those uh, to provide uh, or, or to achieve uh, efficient discovery. Um, uh, results. Um, and then the discovery schedule uh, is pretty important. Your static environments uh, may have uh, uh, more uh, spread out uh, frequency and uh, where your dynamic environments may have uh, more uh, are more frequent in, in their discovery activities. And it's also dependent upon what kind of discovery activity you are we are talking about. If you're talking about just the host basic connection discoveries or we're talking about deep dive application discoveries because some of those deep dive jobs may not be really uh, needed to run day on a daily basis. Uh, part of your zone based discovery to add exclusion rules uh, from your global filtering. Um, so, as an example, if I do not want to discover uh, any certain uh, installed software like KDs or security updates on my Windows machines, I can just exclude them from my installed software list. So, as and when when the discovery is happening, we are we are excluding those uh, CIs uh, from being discovered on the fly. And then last but not least, uh, avoid too many zones. So what I mean by that is that you still want to be at a very high level in when you're uh, uh, dividing your zone. So you, um, you we, for example, we couldn't really go IP subnet by IP subnet in zones. That would not be very efficient. Um, so you have to balance, strike a balance between um, the, um, you know, the, how, how further, how, how much categorization of your entire segment you want to do. Um, it, there's no one answer uh, for four in numbers for every organization. It really depends upon what is the scope of discovery and what are the typical use cases. Um, but uh, that's where, uh, you know, I put uh, HP and RP are, uh, you know, we have our, those are best practices uh, around and we, we are available uh, for, you know, help you guys and walk and, be, and travel with you uh, on, on that journey. Uh, with that, I'll conclude my presentation and we'll open the floor for question and answers. Mark? Great, great, great content, great use case, and um, I think what's great about these presentations is you're showing live demo. <clears throat> so I think that's uh, so I think that's really good. So we have quite a few questions, and for those of you who've been thinking about questions, please add them to the queue. Um, we'll go through those questions um, and, and take them from there. All right. So are you ready, Cindy? There's some really good ones in here. They're like fastballs right down the center of the plate. Let's see what you could do. Okay, I'll start at the bottom. We are running a multi-tenant environment with 15 tenants, 45 probes, 40,000 servers. I think he's bragging. Can you imagine if Zoom <laughs> can handle that? Can you, Sorry, uh, what was the last part? Uh, can you imagine if Zones can handle that? I guess asking questions, can, can zones handle that if yeah. you break it up? And, yeah. yeah, the simple answer to that is that if you were able to manage that using your traditional discovery jobs, um, then I don't see any issues uh, with zone 
manage uh, the same thing being happening in the zones because zones is really the grouping of your discovery jobs. And even if you have multi cannons um, and multiple probes, um, uh, the zone based discovery would still be a solution um, uh, for um, independent of the number of CIs and the uh, uh, and yes, I mean it, it. It would not be as straightforward as we see in the demo, of course. Um, but um, uh, to, uh, the short answer is yes. The zone-based discovery could still be utilized. Great. And I think a similar question you might have covered: Does impact analysis work across zones? I think you might have covered yes. that. Yes. We are just. We are just. Um, what we are doing with discovery zones is that we are just on the discovery side of the equation. We are just uh, segmenting our IP ranges. But on the discovered data or um, you know, on the modeling side, they are still related to each other. So we are not creating a multi-tenancy by creating different zones. Okay. Does zone-based discoveries have trigger limits? And I think you covered that. I think that was a yes. Um, yep. Is universal discovery zone as some of the jobs have trigger CIs to be created for the next job? More or less, sounds like a cascading of events. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, the, the, in, the basic uh, functionality of the triggering that is designed as a in universal discovery is not changed by a zone-based discovery. So that still remains the same. Uh, but generally, I think the answer to that is would be more general. Generally, the unique uh, uh, output of well, one discovery would actually be triggering one, at least one or multiple another discovery jobs uh, as a uh, as a general, um, uh, you know, a nature of the spiral discovery. Now, within the zone, um, what you could do is that out of, you know, let's say your spiral, the entire uh, uh, spread of your discovery job in a spiral discovery is 20 discovery jobs. You can limit that to just three, so so that you know you're not, uh, uh, you know, triggering those additional 17 triggers that you don't really need at this point, uh, in th at that particular point in time. Maybe in the future, but not at that particular point in time. Um, so that's where the trigger limitation came uh, comes into the picture. Great. Here's a good one. Uh, can discovery of SQL apps be triggered not by node slash IP? Uh, something that would be good for a platform as a service for uh, SQL instances. Can discovery? Yes, be it could be. Yeah, you could actually be. Now they are out of the box. You get the edit. Or you 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 get the triggered. Uh, Basically, the, what uh, triggers are basically TQL uh, or topology query language that UCMDB uses um, for any kind of for modeling um, uh, jobs as well. So you could um, so those TQLs really define what is the trigger and for that particular discovery job and how the trigger is being populated. Uh, but you could actually uh, create uh, you can take an existing trigger and modify that for your discovery pattern that we what triggers you want to use um, for your environment. Um, uh, for a platform as a service, as an example, and uh, use that to um, uh, trigger your uh, discovery um, activity. Um, so if you look at different discovery modules uh, within the UCMDB that we have, for example, vCenter uh, um, discovery for VMware, we have, uh, they all have different kind of trigger, uh, triggers for their discovery jobs. And the reason is that um, you know, they, everything cannot have the same kind of trigger. So, um, they would have to have different kind of triggers uh, based on the use case. Now, out of the box, you get typical. Uh, a documented use case, but uh, if there is any adapter and. Uh, uh, Um, okay, well, I think with uh, kind of lost the audio at the top of the hour, and that's part of. Uh, uh, the maintenance will. So I want to thank all of you for, for attending. Uh, great questions. We have quite a few to follow up on. Great activity, great follow up. Um, and then I'll make sure that you folks have access to that. And thanks again. Truly appreciate your participation and looking forward to seeing you all at HP Discover or other HP Enterprise events. Have a great day.